warm hello and welcome from us here at Speaker's Corner the week after Eid 2017, summer July. I think it's the second day of July. Second or third day of July? Second. Second? First, first. It's not the first. Second, first second, second. second. Yeah, yeah. Let, let me start this. Let me double check. Aki, you're living in the past. What's going on? Oh, it's the second of July, brother. Bismillah, let's get into it, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. You're here with your brother Muhammad Tawheed here at Speaker's Corner the week after Eid. Um, I've met a lovely, a lovely Manchester, Manchester lad here. His name's Michael. And Michael's here to talk to me about some Jesus, I think. Yeah. Fantastic, wicked. So uh, let's have a good discussion about ourselves. And um, guys, again, guidance having you comment, like, and subscribe. Thank you very much for your support. And hopefully, we're going to have an interesting discussion now. Can Michael. Also, yeah, can I also speak about. In this, after that discussion, we speak about um, Ishmael. Uh, is Muhammad a descendant of Ishmael? We could do, but that will be something totally separate and uh, yeah, yeah. a completely different kind of discussion. Yeah, but it's a, it's a good one. It's, it's a good one. I'll do that one with you off cam because Mike, the Mike. things I do on. No. That's your topic. He's asked you to do one topic. Yeah. You should be respectful and let him ask you. I just said I will do. Yeah, he said. Yeah. yeah. You can record it for your channel if you like, but I won't put that one on mine. Yeah. Fair play. Uh, yeah. Okay. Because because I, I I stick quite niche on my on my channel. Okay. I don't okay. Just okay. anything on my channel. Like you asked me about who you said was it yourself? You said you wanted to speak to me about jihad. Okay. I would never film that. Okay. So, fair play. Right. So Michael, do you wanna? What I would like to speak to you about today, sir, uh, is I spoke to you over there, I could see you had a bit of paperwork about you yeah. and you were getting questioned, yeah. you were getting shotgun questioned from, uh, from what I think is an Arab individual, possibly a Muslim. Yeah. And you were saying about Protestants, then you were talking about Catholics, then you were talking about Orthodox, then you were, you were basically saying what you believed and what, and what you disbelieved in. Mm -hmm. Which gave me a bit of interest to ask you what your belief was. Yeah. And you said that you believed Jesus was your Lord, Master, Creator and Saviour. Yeah. Then I asked you the initial question whether you thought Jesus was God. Yeah. And you felt apprehensive to give me a closed answer just to my closed question. You yeah, wanted to indeed. elaborate on it, which is absolutely fine. Yeah. And that's what we're here to do, hopefully. Yeah. Well, so if you'd like to start, <laughs> and, um, you know, I'm speak about what it is that you believe in, hopefully, sir. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I was asked the question, is Jesus God? And the reason I felt apprehensive about answering is because it's a closed question. Um, most of the people ask, is Jesus God? And the answer is going to be yes. And the next question is going to be, is God a man and I'm going to go, no, and then that's the end of the discussion. The question that needs to be asked to speak is, called, is why do we believe Jesus is God? And that is what I want to elaborate on today. Now as a Christian, we believe Jesus Christ to be God, not because he's a man, okay? We believe he's God because of his divine identity, okay? In the Bible, it says that Jesus Christ existed before the world began in glory with the Father as the eternal Son of God, okay? And we believe, as Bible-believing Christians, that the revelation of the one true God consists of Father, Son and Holy Spirit, which is otherwise known as the Trinity, okay? A lot of people misunderstand the Trinity, and to me it's a very simple concept, okay? I'm going to give you one Trinity of God, which you'll all agree on, and then we can move forward with the Trinity and whatever else you want to speak about, why we believe Jesus is God, okay? Now, if I said to you, God is holy, you'd all say, yes, we agree, he's a holy God, okay? If I said to you that God's word is eternal and it's uncreated, we'd all say, yeah, we agree on that. What I've just done there, I've created a trinity out of God. And not one person would disagree on that statement. Okay? There's three things I've mentioned about God which are true. Okay? What we believe in Christianity is that Jesus Christ is God, not because he's a man, because of his divine identity. Now in the book of Timothy, in 1 Timothy 3.16, if you've got a Bible, you can check this passage out. It says, um, God, the mystery of godliness is this, God was made manifest in the flesh. We believe that God can enter his own creation through the person of Jesus Christ. This is known as the incarnation, also known as the virgin birth, which Christians believe in and Muslims believe in also. Okay? That's why we believe Jesus is God, because it's divine identity. And not just at that, in the book of John it says, in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Now according to Islam, Jesus Christ is the Word of God and Allah creates by his word, okay? So if Allah creates by his word, and Jesus is the word of God, that makes Jesus God in my, I'd surmise Jesus is God based on that, okay? Because God's word is eternal, and it's, it, you can't separate God from his word. He says, be and it is. Allah says, be and it is, okay? So Jesus Christ is the word of God. 
and in the book of John it says in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Okay? The book, yeah, so just like this, a bit of distance. Yeah, yeah. The book of Colossians, I'll read it out so you can see the references for yourself. Okay? We're talking about divine identity here, not because he's a man. We're talking about a divine identity that's always existed, and we see this eternal relationship in the incarnation, through the lifetime and the ministry of Jesus Christ through his death and resurrection. Okay. Sorry. No, no, shush. Sure, sure. Oh, right, yeah, sorry. We just hold that one second. Oh, yeah, yeah. I think yeah. they're going to stop yeah, blowing the window. I know, I can send it. Oh, right, yeah, yeah. Do we talk? Yeah. 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 Oh, 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 yeah. So is it? Yeah. 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 Well, Lenin was a little bit of France, but then he became very quickly a state socialist. When, when he came to power, yeah, he had to hunt down the Soviets. And, uh, That's all right, I got it. He had the Grand War for Lenin's command. It says here about Jesus Christ, he is the image of the invisible <laughs> God, the firstborn over all creation. For by him all things were created that are in heaven and that are on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created through him and for him. And he is before all things, and in him all things consist. Okay, fantastic. Yeah. So that's why we believe Jesus is God, not because he's a man, not because he goes to the toilet and does all those things that human beings do. It's divine identity we're talking about. The Bible, reveals the divine identity of Jesus Christ. He is Lord and Saviour. It says in the Bible that every knee will bow, every tongue will confess that he is Lord. Okay. So thank you very much Michael for uh, that was an interesting um, introduction about Jesus and whatnot. Now uh, as someone who imposes himself to be a monotheist in belief, so I believe that there is one God and not three gods and I don't believe in the God head uh, to have a you know tri heads, you know three heads I believe that God is one, one alone. Just as Jesus actually professed in the Bible himself, and um, we will we will open this and explore this as well. Uh, we can also talk about the divinity of Jesus Christ um, to see if there is any room for divinity of Jesus Christ, and we can also look at the understanding and ideology that as to whether the, the term God or divine and the term creation or the term creator and creation if they actually go together and we can use them to complement each other in terms of divinity names and attributes or if they pose as oxymorons and actually one cancels the other out okay we, obviously i'm an english speaker so i'll speak to you in the english language so hopefully everything here today will be fully comprehensive yeah so first and foremost uh, as a muslim what i believe uh, is that there is no one worthy of worship but allah god himself and that I know Allah from 99 of, 99 of his names and attributes that he has allowed me to know him from as creation. Now, some of Allah's names, for example, we can attribute to ourselves as human beings in terms of what they represent. For example, Allah is the most gracious, the most merciful. Now, us as human beings, even though we are clearly differentiated and distinctively different to Allah, we can have mercy, for example. The fact, the fact that you stand here to give me your time of the day, Michael, to have a chat with me, this is very merciful of you, yeah? And very gracious of you, for example, yeah? Okay, then there are some of Allah's names that are just for him alone. For example, if Allah is known to be the all-able, we are not the all-able, only Allah is the all-able. If Allah is the all-knowing, we are not the all-knowing, Allah is the all-knowing. So now what I would like to do is go to a bit of doctrine from the Bible. So before I even go to the Quran, I want to go to some of your scripture, uh, if, that, if that would be so, yeah, yeah. so kind of you to accept me to do so, uh, and explore these, uh, these statements that you've made to promote the divinity of Jesus Christ, who was a man. And I won't start on the one that you told that you said, uh, that you mentioned anyway, because you said that that's how I would debunk you. Which one was that? Uh, God is not a man that you should lie, nor son of a man that you should change his mind. Yeah? yeah? So you basically debunked yourself already on that, but that's not, that's absolutely fine. I'll go down another avenue with you. First of all, what I'd like to do is talk about the divinity of Jesus Christ. So, now, what do we know about Jesus Christ? Jesus Christ was a man, you're absolutely right. Jesus was born. Jesus was born from a Virgin Mary. And uh, God said be, and he was, for example, so he was born from the word of God. Now let's relate back to Adam, Prophet Adam. 
Now, as you said, Jesus never came from a man. He just came from a virgin woman. That was so impossible and it's so miraculous of the fact. And this, and as you said, by your words as well, and I quote, and this proves his divinity. Now, if we go back to Adam, the first man of creation, who both you as a Christian and me as a Muslim believe in as well, believe in his existence and believe that he was the first man of creation as well. Adam neither came from a woman nor a man. So put in the virginity, whether the woman was a virgin or not, he came from nothing. He came from, as you would say, or as I would say, dust, dust, clay, clot of blood. Whatever it is that we want to relate back to, he came from neither a woman nor a man, firstly and foremost. Now secondly, Jesus Christ himself, he went through a lot of change. Now if you narrate back to Malachi 3.6, God does not change. But Jesus went through a lot of change. Jesus went through, and what is the biggest change in your life? The biggest change and transition in your life is that you go through death. Because surely everything in your life that poses as a massive change to yourself, for example, say you go from being healthy to being sick. Say you go from being wealthy to being a man of poverty. Say, for example, you go from being uh, you know, a, a straight man to being a gay man. Say, for example, you go from being a man to having a sex change. You're changing all of the things that does not stop your life. Yeah, and you continue with your life. But if you go from life to death, you are, this is the most major change, and this is an end to your life. Yeah, and this is when you go to the next. So, um, according to according to Malachi three six again, God does not change. Now, Jesus Christ, he went through many changes. He went through life, he went through death, and he went through life, according to uh, Christian doctrine and scripture. And I must also say as well that today here here today, if I'm prompted on it, I'm going to prove to you from biblical scripture as well that Jesus did not die. Okay. Um, is there any, any words you'd like to just put in now that you know the, the kind of uh, situation I'm going to go into this before I actually start? Well, there's a lot of points there you hit. Sorry, there's a lot of points there. I haven't hit them yet, I just want to... Just want to... Okay. Yeah. Now, why would does say that... It's true, it does say that in Malachi, God does not change that to the okay. But what you've got to remember is God makes a promise and He keeps His promises. Now, God promised in the Old Testament that He was going to make an everlasting covenant see the Lord in the New Testament, okay, which is the covenant of blood, okay, the covenant of atonement to pay for the sins of the people. Now if you look at the Old Testament, you see animals being sacrificed for sins. Now the animal sacrifice only took away sins. It's the different the different ones was one that took away for a year, was one that took away for a few months, as, as I remember. Okay. But God said he's going to make an eternal covenant. Okay. Now in the Old Testament it says that Yahweh will walk on the waves of the water. Jesus Christ walked on the waves of the water in the New Testament. He walked on the waves of the sea. Pete was in the boat and Jesus walked towards him and Pete was looking for Jesus Christ. He said, this is God who heals the sick, who heals the blind. Jesus said, the blind. Okay. Jesus said, I only, see what, I only do what I see my father do. I only speak what my father speaks. He says, I am the father. John 5.30. Yeah. By myself I can do nothing. I judge only as I hear and my judgment is just. For I seek not to please myself but him who said so conclude on your point yeah, and then yeah, yeah. I'll, uh, now Jesus said I am the father of God okay now the first commandment in the Old Testament is hear all Israel the Lord your God is one God Jesus Christ said I am the father of one and then in John 14 28 he yeah. said my father is greater than I so there's a clear very good point very good point that I'm going to address that as well know the answer that's great now the reason why Jesus said I the father is greater than I he wasn't talking about he was talking from a temporary position if you read the book of Philippians, it says Jesus Christ humbled himself and he became a man. He took off his heavenly robe and he became a man so he could be our saviour. That's why he was born. So God birth. limited himself. He didn't limit himself, no. If, Jesus, if God came down in all his glory, okay, it says in the Bible, if anyone sees God, will not see his face, will not live because his glory and his eminence are that great. So he had to lower himself one of us Thanks so that he could walk with us and talk with us and to be our saviour and like to, um, and that's why he is our perfect saviour because he came from above and he wasn't born like we were saying that Adam was born from the dust Jesus Christ was the man from heaven the bible says that Adam was the man born from the dust the earthly man was the heavenly man the heavenly man came to atone for the sins of the world and he could only do that because he came from heaven himself and he showed us thank you very much Mark. Um, so what I'd like to do now without further ado is open the scripture so we can speak from scripture itself. So you spoke about the authority of Jesus Christ and again, you know, you're promoting the divinity of Jesus uh, Christ through the authority that he was actually given. So this is controlled authority. This is a controlled situation, a controlled environment. And Jesus Christ, by terms of his skills and attributes, 
and ethic is actually all under control pretenses. And this is what we need to understand. Now, God is limitless. God is limitless. It was the Father in heaven who you refer to as the Father, and I name him as the one true Lord, who is Allah. And there's nothing that comes before him, nothing that comes after him, and nothing that is like him. Yeah? And this actually, these, these verses of the Quran that I'm speaking to you from, they hold an, a massive weight of the Quran. It's something that I speak on a weekly basis about, and this is Tawheed, which is to promote the oneness of God. And firstly, to negate anything other in worship than God. And not just by what we say in our tongue, but by principle and action and belief. Now, what I'd like to do is speak about some of that here and now today, and I'll actually promote Tawheed, as I said, monotheism, in the Bible, Biblical Scripture itself. Now, first and foremost, to address your point about authority. Yes, absolutely. In Matthew 28, 18, Jesus, uh, it says in the Bible, then Jesus came to them and said, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Now, this is very, very clear to show you that authority is with Jesus Christ. However, it does pose the question, and you will always come back to this. If Jesus, if you're using this authority to, to, to promote the fact that Jesus was God and he was divine and he is, you know, he's the Alpha and the Omega, the, as I said, you know, no beginning, no end, etc. Where is he getting this judgment? Where is he getting this authority from? Now, if we go now to John 5.30, and as I said to you already, uh, and it was by myself, I can do nothing. Take heed to the word nothing. By myself, by myself, by Jesus' self, he can do nothing. He judges, I judge only as I hear, and my judgment is just for, because, yeah? So his judgment is just because he seeks not to please himself, but him who sent me. Now again, if Jesus is divine, why is it that by himself he can do nothing? He needs God. Just as we need God for our sustenance in our life, because God is the self-sustaining, God is the self-sufficient. For any kind of sufficiency in our life, for any kind of uh, sustenance in our life, we need God. God never needs us. So for people to be going around, to be frank, promoting that Jesus is God, is blasphemous against your own scripture. Because in your scripture itself, Jesus promotes the idea that there is nothing worthy of worship except God. And I'm going to further go to uh, promote a few of the verses in the Bible to uh, stand by this point. Now, if we go to um, Isaiah 45, 5, now, yeah? So we're heading completely different place, right back in the beginning now, yeah? I am the Lord, and there is no other. La ilaha illallah, this is what Muslims believe. There is no one worthy of worship but Allah. Negation and affirmation. Negating anything besides worshiping anything besides God, and then affirming God to be the one and only true Lord. I am the Lord, and there is no other. Apart from me, there is no God. There again, it's said again. Apart from me, there is no God. Isaiah 45, 5, I've only read two parts of the same sentence, same verse, and already God has repeated himself twice to promote la ilaha illallah, negation, affirmation. I will strengthen you, though you have not acknowledged me, so that from the rising of the sun to the place of its setting, so the whole world, people may know there is no, there is none besides me. Again, la ilaha illallah. Now again, again, the fourth time within these two verses. Now we are on Isaiah 45, 6. I am the Lord and there is no other. La ilaha illallah, which is something that a Muslim testifies when they accept Islam to be the truth. And it's something that a Muslim testifies on their deathbed by the will and mercy and grace of Allah, the Almighty, the Exalted, the Most High, is, that, is Isaiah, mentioned. Sorry, is that Isaiah 42? It's Isaiah 45.5 and 45.6, sir. God mentions this. In accordance to the Bible, the Father in heaven, who gave, who gave Jesus the authority that he had, the one whom without Jesus can do nothing as he clearly professed in the, in the earlier verse that I mentioned, Alpha mentioned, has been mentioned four times, repeated four times. There is no one worthy of worship except Allah. And this is what we come to the heart to profess. So please, sir, if you could just upon this point, and I will, I will, go, I will address your other points, Michael. Yeah, yeah. I know it's a hot day, mate. I'm, I'm yeah. white just like you, man. I'm just going to turn up like a tomato, just like you. Um, but yeah, if you could, yeah. <laughs> Hey, I'm, I'm the same as you, man. So, uh, if you could just address that point and then we'll go on to the other spheres, yeah? So, basically about the authority of Jesus Christ. So, what I opened, I opened Isaiah 45, 5 and 45, 6. I also opened John 5, 30. Uh, if there was any more, let me just get back at you with that. 
Um, I also spoke to you about Matthew 28, 18, which actually pushes towards your point. But again, this just uh, goes to prove the, con uh, the conflicts and contradictions in the Bible that prove that it can't be the protected book of God. But we can go into that as well. Thank you very much. Now, what you did there, you quoted a lot of the Bible to make a case for what you're actually saying here today. Now, my, my, my thing is, here is this. If the Bible's good enough to prove your case, it's good enough to refute it. So what I'm going to do, I'll take on board what you said about the passages, but I'm going to show you some other passages. Okay. So, are you talking about the authority of Jesus Christ? Do you want me to hold the mic? Or I myself can do... Uh, yeah, I can hold it. All right. He says, I myself can do nothing. Now, if you're going to put that scripture, okay, you have to leave an altar, which is not your bits. And that's what we're going to no, Can I just stop you on that point right for you? Now, is it your first time at the corner? No, I've been here a few times, times yeah. yeah. Without sounding patronizing, yeah? I, I promise you I do not mean to do this. Yeah? So, the reason why I bring your scripture to you, it is the scripture that you profess to be the truth. Now if I am to stand here and defend my scripture, I am only going to be defending my scripture if my scripture is under scrutiny by you. Now your scripture is under scrutiny by me as a Muslim. Yeah, no offense to you, you seem like a stand up, stand -up uh, individual, yeah? Um, so this is the, actually the reason. Now I am not here to say that the reason why I'm promoting and picking at certain verses in the Bible to show you the crookedness in your text. I'm not here to say that, that, that your Bible, if I bring this point, I must actually accept the whole of your text. No, what I said before, and I'll say it again, as Muslims we believe in the, in the, in the text that came from uh, Allah, of course, yeah? Now, the Bible, we believe that there is original scripture, but it was changed by the will of Allah. This scripture was actually altered. So when I'm bringing your scripture forward, I'm not promoting, I'm, I don't need to accept the rest of your scripture because I'm saying that Allah knows best, but your scripture has been changed. And if I relate back to the Quran, just just now since we're on it, and I'll give you back, uh, give you back your speech, yeah? Yeah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah, Surah Tannisa, which is chapter four of the Quran, the Surah of Women, verse 82. Had they considered that the Quran was other than, from other than God, they would surely have found therein it much contradiction. This is an acid test, basically. This is a test, a falsification test, if you may. That Allah is actually putting down a challenge that the Quran would be from other than God if you had found there in contradiction. So, just just for you to, to stand on, or, you know, when you speak now, that for me to bring the Bible forward is not because I must believe in the whole Bible as a criteria of truth. No, I believe that the Bible is a criteria of false, as Jeremiah 8, 8 have had. Um, Passages that talk about. Uh, hey, uh, take, take the mic, take the mic. Oh, sorry. Passages that you quote, which you say is the most position. Then, what you're pushing, I'm getting back to the news, except those passages and everything else, you don't accept. That's, that's what I'm getting at. That's what I'm saying. I understand your point, Michael. Thank you very much. No, what I'm trying to say by that is, as a Muslim, I believe that the Quran is the word of God. As a Muslim, I must also believe in the six articles of faith. So not only do I believe in the Quran being one of the scriptures from God, I believe that the original uh, word that came to Jesus and the word that came to Moses and David, etc., etc., these were, these are words from God. However, they have been altered by the will of God. So when I'm bringing your passage, nevertheless, even, even if I'm saying, okay, here in your Bible, it says this, I'm not going to say that I believe or disbelieve in it just because I'm speaking it. Just say, for example, by the will of God. Sorry? It's by the will of God. It's Everything, by the will of God. Why? Everything is by the will of God. Everything happens by the will and instruction and permission of God. So the scripture is by the will of God to for, for example, this feather that I've just picked up, yeah? It's fallen off a dirty pigeon, for example, or something, whatever it was, yeah? It's cooked while I just picked up in my hand. Right? <laughs> it's not a people feather, but by the will and permission of God, the pigeon was born, the pigeon flew, the pigeon lost its feather, for example, yeah? By the will and permission of God, I was able to pick up that feather and by the permission of God, I was able to throw that feather. Now by the permission of God, I'm able to stand here and speak to you with comprehension about that, using that as an example. I mean, everything is by the will and permission of God. If if God couldn't protect the Bible then, why can not protect the Quran now? That's a good question. That's a good question, Michael. Thank you very much. It's not about whether God can do it or not. God has done stuff for us to understand. 
Allah, He is the one who has created our brains and our logic and everything in it. Now, if Allah, for example, was to show us a dimension of paradise, for example, where there are rivers of honey and milk and wine, where there are palaces built upon palaces built upon whatever it is in heaven, a place that there is absolute euphoria and tranquility, a place that there's no sickness, and the term itself of being forever eternal. Now, for us as human beings, we cannot conceptualize, neither can we absorb this understanding because God has not even allowed us to have the ability to be eternal in this in this world. So, so God protected this world because God has protected the Quran. That's yeah. why the, yeah. just saying oh. the Quran, the Bible hasn't been changed. Well, well, so say that, say, it does actually say in your Quran, the Bible has not been changed. It says, refer to the people of God, I'm where there is guidance and light. The Quran actually says the Bible I'm, is the word of God. I'm glad you brought that up. Now, this for this for the for the viewers as well, inshallah, because I did actually want to do an additional video just to address this point. But I may very well just keep it in this video now. I'm very happy that you've said this now. Um, so Michael here has said that in the Bible, in the Quran, it does not say that the Bible is corrupted. And on the contrary to this, it says that the Bible is a word for God and it should be a scripture that you refer back to. As I know, ironically, I know which verse you are referring to. And it's the people of the scripture. It's the people of the scripture. Okay, now, it's, it's, it, it is a very popular uh, statement for Christians to claim that in the Quran there's nothing to say that the Bible is corrupted. However, I've put together a few here just to go through now, yeah? Okay, so first I'll read from the Quran. Bismillah. In the name of God, the most gracious and most merciful. Can ye, referring to all ye, all, all men of faith, yeah? Entertain the hope that they will believe in you. Seeing that a, that a party of them heard the word of Allah and perverted it knowingly after they understood it, then woe to those who write the book with their own hands. And then, oh, oh sorry, it sounds like Do you see what I mean? Do you see exactly what I mean? This is referring to the scripture, the Bible. Okay? This is actually from Quran. Absolutely, but this is Quran. Imagine that. Imagine that, yeah? Seeing that a party of them had the word of Allah and perverted it knowingly after they understood it, then woe to those who write the book with their own hands and then say, This is from Allah. Who's he referring to? traffic with it for miserable price. Who's he referring to? Wait, we're going to get to it. We'll get to it, yeah? Woe to them for what their hands do write and for the gain they make thereby. Then, in the Quran, chapter 3, verse 78, there is among them a section who distort the book with their tongues. As they read, you would think it is a part of the book, but it is no part of the book. And they say that that it is that is from Allah, but it is not from Allah. It is they who tell a lie against Allah, and well, they know it. Yeah. Further to this, they sorry, just just we're gonna get to it. These are the people of the scriptures before the Quran. Why does it say in the scriptures the Quran just the where there's guidance in life? Bring, uh, do you want to bring out the? Uh, do you want to bring that out? And I will just uh, refer to the camera because there's another few points as well that I'd like to go through. Yeah? So now in the Quran again, uh, chapter five of the Quran, Sorry, verse hold the Bible and then passages there. Yeah. But because of their breach of their covenant, we cursed them and made their hearts grow hard. They change the words from their places and forget a good part of the message that was sent them. Nor wilt thou cease to find them, bearing a few, ever bent on deceit. Yeah, my... But forgive them and oh. overlook. For Allah loveth those who are kind. For them too. For those too. And by the way, this is to answer your question, yeah? Yeah, yeah, I've got a minute. You know, let me start this verse again. No. Yeah. And this is to I've address, lost it. I've address lost uh, the in your defense. Yeah? yeah. yeah. This is to address the claim of your defense, where you said, where are they referring, where is God in the Quran referring to Christians? So here we go. Again, chapter five, verse 13 to 14. But because of their breach of their covenant, we cast them and made their hearts grow hard. They changed the words from their right places and forget a good part of the message that was sent them. Nor wilt thou cease to find them, bearing a few, ever bent on deceits, but forgive them and overlook their misdeeds. For Allah loveth those who are kind. From those two who call themselves Christians, we did take a covenant, but they forgot a good part of the message that was sent to them. So we estranged them with enmity and hatred between the one and the other to the day of judgment. And soon will Allah show them what it is they have done. Now, Michael, just to show you that they've actually, just to show you, 
I've actually put together quite a number here. Yeah? It's quite a number here that actually refer back to people of the book or the, or the Christians and the Jewish scriptures, for example. Yeah, yeah. That's just to address that question. Now, if you would be so kind, we can go into your one and we can uh, address this as well. That's absolutely fine. So if you could just refer it to me, which, uh, which verses? So just to play, just say, as a Muslim, you might, the might. word of God. Yes, Muhammad, Muhammad. Muhammad. Go to Surah 2946. Which one do you want us to refer to? Surah 2946. That's the best, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Alright. You're running out. Muhammad, are we not allowed to use your video? Are we allowed to use your video or not? Yeah, yeah. It's because ours is running out. What you mean, uh, take from my channel? Yeah. Oh, then welcome to is okay? As long as you don't edit it in uh... Is it okay if we take yours then? <laughs> no, take yours. I won't edit it, promise you. That's fine, I'll take, right. I'll take it out for you. Alright, that's fine. Use the phone if you want. No, it's